So I'd uh, like to begin by um, congratulating uh, Dorothy on what I found was a really excellent book, a very um, enjoyable read. Um, but also as we're talking about choice, um, her choice of cover design, <laughs> which I think is really, really nice. So there's not resources you have to draw on for, <laughs> for that. Um, so the risk of going last always means um, I'm probably going to cover some stuff here that's already been, been said, um, but it might act, act as a useful um, reminder. Um, I'll just focus really on what um, I took from the, from the book. And really I found it a great sort of treasure trove of theoretical and methodological um, insights. Um, and not only that, but also how that fed into um, what I thought was a very well-designed study. So um, if there's any you know, PhD or master's uh, students in the room, it's a good one to, uh, to have a look at and take note of. Um, and also what you mentioned, Dorothea, this relationship between theory and practice and how they can mutually um, inform each um, other. Um, as people mentioned already, and as your slides um, talked about, I really like the idea of um, development as a um, process. I think the nice quote you use is, the point of development is to expand the portfolio of the capabilities that form the shape of an individual's freedom of choice. So um, I really liked that. And following on um, Jeff's point, actually, actually I, although I agree with it up to a point around the, the role of um, technology and what it played in the, in the book, I think... Um, for me, it was how that fitted in with other key resources and how that related to um, or acted as a basis for an individual's agency, which I found um, quite illuminating. Um, I have to say it was also pretty um, intellectually brave <laughs> um, for uh, two reasons, really, because um, you don't shy away, I think, for some of the key controversies um, regarding the um, capabilities of um, approach, in particular, you mentioned you know, conceptual and practical um, challenges. On the conceptual side, um, I found the discussion around the need to operationalize, um, as we've already um, talked about, but also then maintain the complexity of them, the tension between those and how you negotiate that. And I thought the perspective on looking at methodologically at qualitative um, methods as a way of helping to support that, I found um, quite interesting. And as Jeff already um, mentioned, I think you do take a position up to a point, I mean, I'll leave it for others to, to read, I won't give it away, <laughs> is your, um, the relationship between individual and collective choice. Um, and as we discussed the other day, it's pretty um, timely as well. Um, and in terms of the practical um, aspects, uh, Saskia, you've already talked about um, what you might define as sector outputs, and ideally that's what funders want and not really the unpredictable nature of... Um, sort of the choices people might make in an, on an individual um, level. And then on the application of um, CA, how to turn the conceptual richness, if you like, into a development plan. I think the choice framework works really well for, for doing that. Um, and also related to that, the role of participation that you mentioned as, as well. Um, in addition to that, I think there was a real... Um, depth of scholarship and analysis that I'd like to applaud you for. Um, and there's a couple of, of points, well, four really on this, um, that I actually found really interesting. Um, one was so the illumination of the role of discourse within social structures. Um, and the role of discourse in framing the perceived range of options available for um, individual and collective choice, which I have to know, I must do more thinking about myself, but it was, it was a, uh, certainly nice to uh, get that insight. Um, I found it very bene beneficial. And also, of course, the choice framework itself, which we've all um, talked about um, already. But again, how I think for me it positions um, technologies as part of social structures that users have to, to navigate. Um, I think it was very useful in, in doing this. And I like how at the, um, at the end, <laughs> in your conclusion, you position the choice framework as a as a living tool, so you know, go out there, very much, I guess, Ascent talks about the capabilities uh, approach, go out and use it um, in your own work, critique it, etc. And I think that as a, as a living tool, not to kind of hold on tightly to it, um, was really um, admirable. And just to echo Jeff's point earlier as well, that really came out for me as well, is the strong focus on people. So the whole um, 
<coughs> chapter five, I think it was, which was um, titled Meeting People, which, you know, simple and very um, effective and nice detailed four case studies um, that I found really, really, really interesting, particularly how um, their roles change through their use of um, technology, which I found um, really, really good. Um, and the final one for me was, um, we talked about resources, a lot about resources, but the point you make in a few places in the book around the focus on, that you put a strong focus on um, psychological resources, and you mentioned in your, in your talk as well, but how the ICT for general, ICT for D community in general, don't focus on that probably as much as they could, and there's aim for, scope for future work there. Um, I think that's all I wanted to say, other than to end by congratulating you again on wonderful achievement. Thank you. Thank you.